Okay, so let's have a go at this question nine here, blatantly about redox. So this question is about vanadium compounds and ions, and we need to use the table, uh, use the data from table four to identify the species that can be used to reduce VO2 one plus ions to VO2 plus ions in aqueous solution and no further. And we need to explain our answer. So first thing, as I mentioned in the analysis here, we've kind of got two tables, all right? So we've got two tables here, and you know what? I'm just going to draw a line between them like so. Uh, because we've got our vanadium kind of uh, ions, if you like, in the top half of the table, and then the things that could potentially reduce the VO2 one plus ions uh, below. So let's have a look at the data, and it's upside down here. So our anti-clockwise rule isn't going to apply, so it kind of gets flipped around to the... <clears throat> clockwise rule if you like so um the thing is we're looking for something on the right hand side uh over here okay now chloride ions will they actually reduce vo2 one plus to vo2 plus no they won't because this value here plus 136 uh, one sorry plus 1.36 is um is higher than plus 0.1 so that's not going to happen However, both Fe2 plus and zinc, both of those have E0 values that are lower than one. So that is why both of those will actually cause that VO2 one plus to be reduced. However, we're looking for something that will reduce it to VO2 plus, but no further. We notice we've got X here uh, on the left hand side, VO2 plus going to V3 plus. We do not want that to happen. So what we're looking for is something that has a value between plus 0.34 and plus 1.00, which is, of course, Fe2+. Plus. This here, this is plus 0.77, so it will reduce VO2 1+, plus, but it won't reduce VO2 plus to V3+. Plus. So our reagent here is Fe2+. Plus. Zinc, of course, is more negative than both of them. So it will reduce it all the way to V3 plus. We don't want that. So our explanation here is this. So uh, Fe2 plus E0 value is um, lower. No, I'm going to put lower. I'm going to put less positive than the E0 value for VO2 plus more positive than the E0 value for uh, VO2+. plus. So in other words, it won't reduce that one. It will reduce the first one, but it won't reduce it any further. Next up, give the oxidation state of vanadium in VO H2O5 to plus. Now in the analysis, I said we can eliminate that H2O from there completely because each H2O, well, they've got each H2 molecule, if you like, or ligand as they are here, um, has an overall oxidation state of zero. So there's no point muddying the waters with that. Just get rid of it. And so we end up with VO2 plus. Now each oxygen is minus two. So to get to two plus, then, of course, what we need is plus four, and that is the oxidation state of vanadium here. You can write plus four. Um, they will absolutely accept that. I just use Roman numerals because it keeps them very separate and distinct from um, charges. 9.3, we are looking at... Um, you know, the isomerism here of this complex ion of vanadium. So we've got um, one isomer shown here of the two chlorines next to each other. We need to draw the structure of the other isomer and state the type of isomerism. Now I could just move one of these chlorines, okay? I'm gonna move, I'm gonna move this one. Okay, the one on the left hand side about eight o'clock there. Now I could move it to the other side, it'll be the same. I could move it to either of the dashed lines where the H2Os are, and it would be the same because they would still be next to each other. What we're looking for is to move that chlorine in an opposite position because what we're looking at here, and I'm giving away the answer to the next part, is a stereoisomerism, and of course it is geometrical, or um, we could call it cis trans isomerism actually. So we've got the V in the middle. I'm literally just going to copy what I see here in terms of um, the bonds. I've got two lines like so. I'm going to put my CL there and CL there. And uh, H2O 
OH2, making sure the oxygen is at the end of those bonds there, folks, because that's where the lone pairs are. Um, and yeah, let's put our charge around there as well in our brackets. Uh, now this type of isomerism is cis trans isomerism. Okay, now we can call it cis trans because the two priority groups, the chlorines, are the same as each other. So you are and you know you are allowed entitled to call it cis trans isomerism. You could also call it EZ. EZ isomerism uh, can be used for every type of geometrical isomerism like this. So it doesn't matter what the priority groups are, you can always use EZ. I should imagine they'll probably accept that in the mark scheme. Um, but when you've got these two priority groups that are the same as each other, that's when you can use cis trans. So I'm being more specific here and, and that's my final answer. So heating NH4VO3 produces vanadium 5 oxide, V2O5, water and one other product, give an equation for the reaction. Okay, so let's kick off with what we do know. Well, NH4VO3 gets heated, so it breaks down, no other reagent there, uh, to V2O5. We've got water and we've got one other product. So what's that one other product going to be? Well, actually, let's balance what we've got here because we've got V2 here. So we need two of these for a kickoff. So V2O5, um, that kind of makes sense, okay? Because, okay, we got five oxygens, we've got six on the left hand side, we've got one H2O. So what's actually left over if we take away all the V2O5 and H2O from there? We end up with, um, well, two nitrogens for a kickoff. And how many hydrogens are we left over with? So that's two away from eight, so that's six hydrogens. So two nitrogens and six hydrogens. Now one other product, is it gonna be N2H6? I think not. Can we think of a really common um, compound that has nitrogen and hydrogen in it? Well, yes we can, that's NH3, and we're gonna make two of them. So it's not N2H6, it's two NH3 ammonia. Last one here, vanadium 5 oxide is a catalyst used in the manufacture of sulfur trioxide. So I said in analysis, we're making sulfur trioxide from sulfur dioxide. Give two equations that show how the catalyst is used and regenerated. So how is it used? Well, V2O5, and this is part of the contact process, of course, uh, reacts directly with sulfur dioxide. And what that does, it actually donates an oxygen. So we end up with SO3 and v 2 O4. So it donates an oxygen. Now what we need to do is regenerate that catalyst. So V2O4. Now how are we going to add oxygen to the V2O4? Well I'll tell you what, let's just react it with oxygen. So half an O2 gives us V2O5. I suppose you could write 2V2O4 plus uh, O2 gives 2V2O5. That's perfectly fine, but because it's diatomic, we can get away with just using half there. So it is worth knowing. I've seen this question come up in AQA papers before. Um, it's a pretty common question. I would know the contact process, and if you did it at GCSE, the equations are the same. Okay, it's just we have to know a little bit more about it now, of course, don't we? So, um, so yeah, that's really important that one. So I don't think this is too tricky a question. Um, I think probably the trickiest bit is this one at the beginning here, excuse me uh, for all that scroll on there, but it's just, I don't know, they just make it more difficult than it needs to be when they list all those E0 values in a weird order in the table. It's always much more easy when it's um, you know, most negative at the top going down to most positive and you can use your anti-clockwise rule. So if you need to do a bit of a reshuffle, hell, hell, if you think it really helps, then very quickly just write them out in order. So um, in another piece of paper, so most negative to most positive, and you get like a clearer picture of what's going on. So they do confuse things when they mix it up in the tables. But like I said, most negative down to most positive, that really, really helps you. So question nine. Um, yeah, looking forward to seeing what the mark scheme's got to say on that one. Make sure you subscribe to our channel so you can keep up to date with all our new content. If you like this, you'll love our free trial. Click the link and check it out. You've now got two choices. You can wait and see what YouTube randomly throws up, or you can improve your grade in under an hour by checking out my awesome chemistry transformation playlists.